Good morning, AP Pre-Calc students. Let's look at day one on lesson 212, talking about logarithmic function manipulation. We're going to apply the properties of logarithms to rewrite expressions. These are our rules that we have seen in Algebra 2. We want to use those properties in both logarithm and base b and natural log, which is log base e. In example one, we've got log of 8x times y to the fourth power. So let's begin by separating this product, log base 8, log of 8 plus log of x plus log of y to the fourth and we want to use that as using the product property. And next we can use the power property, rewriting log of 8 as log 2 to the third power, log of x, no change there. And the power property here, 4 log of y. So the 4 can come out in the front. We can do that with the 3 on the 2 cubed. So 3 log of 2 plus log of x plus 4 log of y. And we've expanded that logarithm as much as we possibly can. For example b, we've got a quotient property that we can use. So natural log of x squared plus 5, and it's under the square root, so I'm going to rewrite that to the half power. And then it's a quotient, so a quotient is the difference of two logs, natural log of x. Then using the power property, we can bring the one half out in the front. One half times natural log of x squared plus 5 minus the natural log of x, and that's as simplified or as expanded as we can get. Don't confuse the x squared plus 5 and try to break it apart. That won't work with our rules. Let's try going the other way. So if we have an expanded log expression, let's condense that. This is a difference of two logs, which is going to make that become a quotient in the end. But first, we want to take care of this 2 in the front. So natural log of x to the fifth minus the natural log of xy to the second power. Now we can combine those and say we have the natural log of x to the fifth divided by x squared, y squared. And finally, we can simplify since x to the second would take away 2 of the x to the fifth. We can simplify that one step further and call this the natural log of the quantity x cubed over y squared. In part b, using the power property first, natural log of x cubed y raised to the third power plus natural log of yz squared raised to the second power. Distributing the power to each of the terms, natural log, when we have a power to a power, we're going to multiply, so x to the ninth, and then 1 times 3 is y cubed, and doing the same thing in the second term, y to the first squared is y squared, and z squared squared is z to the fourth. Then we can combine the two logs of a sum into the single log of a product which gives us x to the ninth, y to the third, times y to the second, z to the fourth. And finally, we want to combine like terms. So x to the ninth and y cubed times y squared, so a power times a power. We add the exponents. And then finally, z to the fourth. So natural log of the quantity x to the ninth y to the fifth, z to the fourth. When you have 
logarithms and need to change the base. There's three rules for us here. We can change the base B to some arbitrary base A using this rule. We can change the base B to base 10 by using common logs. And we can also change base B to base E by using natural logs. If you have your calculator handy, we can evaluate each of these in two different ways. You can either enter into your calculator log base 3 of 13 and find the answer is 2.335. Or you can use log of 13 divided by log of 3. So I'm using the base 10 rule. You can also use the natural log of 13 divided by the natural log of 3. And if you check on your calculator, all of these, either this method, this method, this method, will all give you 2.335. In example B, if we want to use log base 10, we can do log base 10 of 10 divided by log base 10 of 6. We can do natural log by finding natural log of 10 divided by natural log of 6. And either one of those is going to give us an estimate of 1.285. So they should all be equivalent. And finally, for part C, rewriting that using base 10 is log of 2 divided by log of a half. Rewriting using the natural log base is natural log of 2 divided by natural log of a half. And either one will give us a value of negative 1. Let's talk about vertical translations with the product property next. When we're graphing log functions, it's in this form, log base b of k times x. We can show using the product property that log base b of k plus log base b of x is just going to be equivalent to a vertical translation of our parent function. Let's try that on example 4, given log base 2 of 4x. So according to this property, g of x is log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of x. And we can rewrite log base 2 of 4 as log base 2 of 2 squared plus log base 2 of x. Bringing the 2 up here out to the front of the log is 2 log base 2 of 2. But you know log base 2 of 2 is just 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus log base 2 of x is exactly what was predicted in our statement up here, that we have a vertical translation of the parent function. This is our vertical translation, 2 units up. So the parent graph, let's draw the parent graph 2x in red. It's going to pass through 1, 0. 2, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3. This is our parent function, f of x. And our translated function, g of x, has just shifted each point 2 units up, 2 units up, 2 units up, 2 units up. And you can verify that with your table on your graphing calculator if you need to double check that. So translation. After we've graphed both f and x on the grid, we want to describe the change in the output over equal length input values. I did make a table to give myself a frame of reference. Looking at my table, you can see the f of x values and the g of x values that we took from the calculator. And speaking in the right language as the equal length input values. So as the x values increase by one unit, the output values, that's our y values, 
are shifted up two units, which proves our vertical translation that we're adding two to the y value. That's my xy rule when I want to graph this particular transformation. And this is a good place to stop on this first les lesson for logarithmic function manipulation. We have one more set for the lesson that we'll take care of tomorrow.